generation, those born between 1923 and 1932, can now be seen to have transformed the autobiographies of women's lives, to have expressed and suffered for expressing what women had not earlier been allowed to say. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel, my name is Jenny. And I am coming to you today from Tofino, BC. My family and I are on a little vacation, um, socially distanced vacation. Um, and we are on going to be heading out tomorrow. So we've been here for four days now. Really enjoying this um, rental, the vacation rental that we found, and just relaxing in this beautiful place with wild seas and beautiful nature all around us. I wanted to talk to you today about my next reading for the Bloomsbury Diaries series and um, that book is Writing a Woman's Life by Carolyn G. Halburn. So I started this um, thinking it was, you know, going to be primarily or, or focus a lot on Virginia Woolf. And, um, it didn't focus on her as much as I thought it would, but, uh, this book was a bit of a beautiful revelation to me. The reason for it being is that it's the first time I've read a piece of feminist theory in a very, very long time. And what reading this book ignited in me was a fluttery love feeling of um, the best parts of reading feminist theory, which is when it's intersectional and explores an area that you haven't really thought of before. And in this case, it's about the way women write about their lives and how that changed at a certain point in the 20th century based on a certain generation of women. So Halliburton covers a lot in this very tiny, slim book. She um, goes into why writing for white women, European descended women in the Western lit um, canon was challenging and that, you know, women of color, black women, African American women didn't face the same holds as white women did because they had a different experience of Western culture. And so she talks about Alice Walker, she talks about Toni Morrison, um, how they wrote being different from um, other contemporaries from the beginning. And so the way they wrote their lives and the way that they conveyed their lives was always um, from a different perspective. Um, and that there was a kind of group of women who were born um, in a certain early, early 20th century that really broke a mold that white women had been stuck in when they were doing their writing over the years. And that mold was um, informed by the um, criticism and the um, standards that white men had created for writing and the way that they expected women to convey their stories, which was always focused in the areas of um, motherhood, love, romance, etc. And so um, she goes into how a lot of women writers self-censored and refused to delve into kind of the depths that they could have because of those standards that they were, you know, kind of unconsciously or and sometimes consciously upholding um, for women's writing. And so yeah, she goes in a lot more depth. She cites a lot of examples. Um, and she certainly does, you know, explore Virginia Woolf's relationship with Leonard Woolf and her um, part in, in kind of breaking um, down a lot of the barriers that other women faced. Um, and, you know, I just, 
I, I underlined, I actually annotated this book, which I don't usually annotate books, but I, I did underline a lot of things in here and I will revisit this in future. It um, was really important to me in terms of how I see telling my own story, even though I am more of a, I'm a visual artist instead of a writer. I think that self-censoring and I think that, um, you know, conforming to an idea of what a woman is supposed to be in society rather than being like as brutally honest as possible about your own experience is a very typical um, thing that a lot of women do unconsciously, you know? And so um, she was talking about how middle age tends to um, unleash those things for women, that they spend a lot of their earlier years as adults, you know, um, conforming and bending and shaping themselves into something they think they should be. And that middle age kind of frees that and allows them to break through um, into being who they truly are. So I really enjoyed this. I think it um, gave me a few insights about Virginia Woolf, but was more about women, like a kind of broader picture of women writers and how they are perceived and how they perceive themselves and how they form bonds between themselves that are very enriching. I found so many other texts and interesting um, books and writers in here that I want to explore more of. Poets, um, you know, this book made me, you know, desperate to start reading more of Audre Lorde's poetry and Adrian Rich. Um, so a lot more to explore um, out of this slim little volume. So uh, I'm gonna um, add in some scenery from Tofino to this video along with some quotes from this book. And um, yeah, I'll be back again soon with another video. Thank you very much for watching. It is perhaps only in old age, certainly past 50, that women can stop being female impersonators, can grasp the opportunity to reverse their most cherished principles of femininity. I think Virginia Woolf, for example, early realized deeply, if unconsciously, that the narratives provided for women were insufficient for her needs. Her life and her works, the equal to any by her contemporaries, have been until recently less studied academically because we quite literally did not have the language, the theory, or the perceptions with which to analyze them. All her novels struggle against narrative and the old perceptions of the world. Power is the ability to take one's place in whatever discourse is essential to action and the right to have one's part matter.